What's up everyone, Excelling here, and today I'm doing a little special video for you all uh, in collaboration with Asus ROG, one of my sponsors, and the ROG's PC Do-It-Yourself Initiative. We are going to be turning the Asus ROG Strix GA15 desktop into a machine using the B550F gaming motherboard and the Elgato 4K60 capture card. Stick around, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Now, before I get started, I want to go ahead and plug all of the Asus ROG socials. Make sure you guys are following them on Twitter, Instagram, sub to them on their YouTube channel as well. To be in the know about products, deals, even giveaways that you can participate in, I will post these links in the description below. So make sure you guys check those out. And I would like to give a massive shout out to Asus ROG for providing the GA15 desktop as well as the B550F gaming motherboard to make this video possible. Uh, I also want to shout out Elgato, an incredible company who provides streaming peripherals and hardware devices of all kinds. Make sure you check them out as well. All of these links will be in the description below, so make sure you check those out. So let's get started. A very quick note, I am anything but a PC building professional, but I do have quite a bit of experience in the realm of building and tinkering my own PC desktops and my gaming desktops, etc. Uh, if you guys have any advice or knowledge that you would like to convey, to the viewers or to myself, please comment below with some, some things that you think maybe I could improve on in this particular build video or things that you have done, maybe some builds you've done, some creative things in your, in your tech expertise. Uh, but first things first, before you make any internal alterations to any computer uh, hardware, make sure that you disconnect all power cables, turn off that power switch. You wanna make sure that you also are wearing rubber soled shoes if you're on carpet. I, or if you have a, a solid wood floor, that's fine too. But you wanna make sure you prevent any and all conductivity and static electricity because that could ruin some hardware in your rig. After this, you wanna go ahead and unscrew the tempered glass side panel and set it aside. You're gonna be unplugging all your power connections from the power supply to the motherboard. You're also gonna be unplugging any SATA cables, audio connectors, LED connectors, as we are going to be completely removing this motherboard from this case. And once everything is unplugged, you can remove the GPU, you can remove the, the solid state drive, uh, which actually this sports an M.2 solid state drive, and any other modules that have been installed in the PC. I wanna remove the CPU fan and the chip. After you unscrew and remove the fan, you're gonna be removing the chip. Uh, this process requires some delicate hands, so try to be careful. And when you remove the chip, I would just immediately put it into the new motherboard as it's probably the safest resting place you'll find for your CPU. Unscrew the motherboard from the connector points that attach to the case, and then you're gonna remove the motherboard. So make sure to set it on something non-conductive. So something like a cardboard box, the, the box that it comes with, just setting it on top, it would be just fine, or a wooden table or, or something like that. Something that is not going to contain any electric charge. Now the GA15 desktop, is sporting the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X chip. It is extremely powerful. Uh, and this new motherboard, the B550F gaming motherboard, also has this same chipset, uh, the same socket as they call it, and uh, should be just should fit just fine into this motherboard. So once the fan is all installed, we're gonna be taking the new B550F gaming motherboard and we're gonna get it back into the case of the GA15 by screwing it to the case's connectors. And with the M.2, the SSD, the hard drive, if you will, uh, it's going to be installed in this tiny little slot. And then this, this motherboard actually comes with an M.2 plate to cover it and protect it uh, because the M.2 is awfully exposed. It's a very thin and almost fragile feeling chip-like uh, memory storage. So, so this M.2 plate comes with it and you can, you can screw this in super easily into the motherboard. So we've got the CPU in there. We also want to put in the GPU, the 1660 Ti. This is an incredible card uh, for gaming and for streaming, actually, if you want to do some encoding. It has the same encoding, the same technology that RTX cards have. It is the only non-20 plus series card, a uh, non-actual RTX card that has this same encoding technology, so you can encode just as well as the RTX cards can. You're going to place this in. You're going to install it just, just the same way that you uninstalled it from the previous motherboard. Make sure you also install your RAM in whatever slots you find are best. Uh, I like to do first and third slots, alternating slots. 
I don't know why. I just feel like I've gotten into the habit of doing that if there are alternating slots available. So now that all the modules have been installed, the CPU's in, the GPU's in, the M.2 uh, and the RAM, all that stuff is in. Let's go ahead and put in the Elgato 4K60 Pro capture card uh, in an available PCIe slot. Now, the reason that we installed this motherboard is specifically is because the other mother motherboard didn't have enough PCIe slots and didn't have enough space uh, for us to place the capture card. So uh, Asus said that they would send this over and I can install the capture card just right in one of the open slots and it would work just great. And, and as you can see, it fits perfectly. There it is, it's all good to go. And now we can start reconnecting things. So let's go ahead and install the LED connections, uh, the audio cable, the SATA cables for the SSD or M.2 and GPU. And make sure you consult your motherboard's manual for all this stuff while you're installing it to make sure that you are installing it properly. Some configurations could be different than the previous motherboard. So I highly encourage you guys to check out that user manual. Now, the last step to this is connecting the power cables to each module. So make sure that your GPU is plugged in with power. Uh, your CPU power is there. You've got your 24 pin connector for your motherboard and any other things that require power. You want your USB, you want your audio cables, you need your, um, your SATA cables installed. Once that is all done, I recommend testing the power for the rig by plugging in the, the PSU, plugging in with the, the actual plug into the wall, flipping on the power switch and, uh, and turn on your, your PC. And if the fan spins, if things light, light up, that's an incredible sign. Uh, the next step would obviously be turning it on with a monitor to see if everything makes sure everything loads up properly. Once you have confirmed that this all works, go ahead and reattach the tempered side glass panel and reconnect your peripherals and you're done. And if for whatever reason your computer doesn't turn on or it loads a black screen, turn it off, double, triple check each connection and that everything is plugged in properly. And that is it. You now have a PC capable of streaming and gaming uh, both PC and console games. So if you have a gaming PC and you want it to route into this, you totally can. You can just use the capture card. It is 240 hertz capable. It has HDR support. It is an incredibly powerful capture card. So make sure you check that out. Again, I will drop all these links below in the description. Make sure you check out the ASUS PC DIY initiative on Twitter. Uh, go follow them on Twitter, follow them on Instagram, sub to their YouTube channel as well. Also be sure to check out the official ASUS PC DIY landing page that will live on even after the event on December 3rd, where people can find all kinds of useful information on how to build a PC, etc. If you want to sub to my channel, I would appreciate it. Click that sub button, click that notification bell as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. I have been excelling. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to ASUS and Elgato for making this possible. And I will see you guys next time.